911, what's your emergency? I need help. There's been an accident. Okay, I'm going to need your location so I can send out pro the proper unit. Where are you located? Help! I'm a veteran stadium. Veteran stadium in Bayonne. Yes, Bayonne. <coughs> oh, please help me. There's blood everywhere. My friend's not breathing. Okay, miss, what kind of accident were you in? A car accident? Is the vehicle on fire? How many people require assistance? How many are there all together? Yes, a car accident. I hit another car. The vehicle's upside down and it's smoking. My friend is trapped. I can't get her out. Please help. Okay, I just need you to remain calm, miss. I'm dispatching paramedics, police, and fire. Okay, thank you. Please hurry. Is anyone working on no responsive victim? I don't know what that means. What are you talking about? I don't know. CPR. Does anyone there know how to give compression? I don't know how. Please help. Who was driving your vehicle? Were you the driver? Yes, I was driving. Was there alcohol involved? Were you drinking tonight? Yes, we just had a couple of drinks. It's our senior year. Hold on, miss. Did she just say senior year as in high school? I don't believe this. Police, fire, and ambulance dispatch all units to Veterans Stadium in Bayonne. We have a multi-vehicle accident with possible casualties. Vehicle smoking on scene with individual trapped in the vehicle. Hydraulic pry apparatus may be required. Unit 6 responding. Unit 29 responding. Fire dispatch on the way. EMT unit on the way. So, we're getting into the spring, good times are ahead here, a lot of good things happening at the school, the warm weather is broken, today we have a very, very serious message for you. We have a lot of events coming up in the spring, prom, all of those things, but this isn't just specific to that. Alright, today we're going to go over something that is extremely difficult to discuss, it's extremely difficult to be part of. And we want to share it with you because it's so important because you can prevent these things. And that's distracted driving, driving under the influence, which will result in things like this. Unfortunately for us as responders, we see this on a daily basis. What we hope is that you never have to see this or be part of it because it's one of the most scary things you'll ever have to be part of. And in some cases, it's deadly. Today, we have a situation where we're going to recreate a motor vehicle accident that was caused by a distracted driver. We have two vehicles involved in this accident. There's a total of six patients. We're going to take you through the evolution of what it is for us as responders as we come up to a situation like this and the effects after, through this and afterwards. And we want you to if you, I, I know, listen, I understand Snapchat, all of those things on your phone, all we're looking for is a certain amount of time for you to pay attention to this because trust me, it's important. So as we have two vehicles, as we have two vehicles collide, we have one vehicle with a distracted driver who crashed head on into a car that was simply driving, minding their own business, and what do we have? we have the result of a head-on collision with six patients. The 911 call has gone in, dispatch has gone out, and here we go. Initially, our Bayonne Fire Department is gonna respond as we have six patients, six patients entrapped, and when I say entrapped, I mean stuck in the vehicles, they can't get out. Some of them may not be able to get out because they're unconscious. Some of them may not be, get out, be able to get out because the car is intruding upon them. So we need the Bayonne Fire Department to respond with certain tools, tools that you may have heard of, jaws of life, certain things to be able to pry these patients out. And as they come to the scene, McCabe Ambulance, the EMS, the paramedics will respond as well concurrently with our Bayonne Police Department. Bayonne Fire. At the first 
first arriving police unit is on scene. They're going to assess what's going on as the fire department comes up to take a second look at what's happening. Three victims in the gray car, silver car. Two of them are unconscious. Two unconscious in the second car. Right, the fire department's immediately going to try to get to this unconscious patient and try to assist and see what's going on. They need to utilize certain tools to get in. Over here, we're checking for pulses on the patients in this vehicle. I determined that there's an alcohol smell on the breath of the driver of this vehicle. Right, EMS is arriving on the scene to take over patient care. Do me a favor. I'm going to be conducting a horizontal gaze, this, this stigma. All right, we're doing a field sobriety check on the driver of the second vehicle. Individual is not able to follow directions, has an unsteady gait, not steady on his feet at all. Your hands in your side. He's not following directions. All right, the individual is not following directions. All right, I want Meanwhile, over here, we're extricating these patients. We're placing protective sheets over them so that the glass doesn't fall into their eyes. They're working to get the patients out. The door on the silver car is open. Provides access to the victims. It's determined that the driver of this vehicle is dead. There's no pulse. There's nothing that can be done for that patient. There are still two patients in the vehicle with that patient that we need to get out to take care of. Sir, you're under arrest for driving while intoxicated. Yes! The driver of the black vehicle is placed under arrest. None of this is funny at all. types of situations, there's high velocity involved in these accidents, right? And we have to protect the neck, the cervical spine, the back of these patients. So you'll see the EMTs and the paramedics place what we call a C-collar or a cervical collar 
on the patient to keep their neck steady so that they don't become paralyzed if they're moved the wrong way. The driver is being taken to police headquarters, placed under arrest. I want you to understand the significance of this scene. This is a long, drawn-out scene, not just for the responders, but for the victims. And then after that, the families of the victims. You have a car here where there's someone that died in it. There were two other friends, family, sitting next to that person they now have to live with that for the rest of their life. This is a serious thing, folks. I know it's easy to laugh and have fun and everything else. This is extremely serious. Some of you may have had to deal with this personally, know somebody that did, but it's a situation that's preventable. And when we talk about distracted driving, driving under the influence, there is no excuse for it. Your life, the life of your friends, the life of your families will change in an instant. So yeah, this looks like it's really high flow and everything going on and, and there's a lot of equipment, but that's not the underlying message. The underlying message for us is that we wish we never had to do this. This is the worst possible call that we can be on as providers. When we have to pronounce anybody dead, let alone a kid. And then if you ask any police officer, paramedic, EMT, or firefighter that has to go up to the family member and say that your child is dead, I don't know if you can understand the pain that that brings. So again, many of these patients will be okay. We'll get them to the hospital, we'll get them to the trauma center, but they'll never be okay mentally. They'll never be okay emotionally because of poor decisions. And those are decisions that you can make to prevent things like this from happening. Do we have the Emmy? Alright, so like Chief McCabe said, um, in an accident or an incident like this where someone dies on scene, uh, police will call the medical examiner's office and we will respond out um, to handle the body removal. So our investigators are trained to examine the bodies on scene, um, assess injuries, and we would then be bringing that person back to our office for likely an autopsy. So our investigators will arrive on scene and assess and photograph the entire scene, including the body, for posterity, for background, for just making sure that we get what is um, what had happened 
and what's involved multiple vehicles one vehicle um, and then the whole process of the extrication of removing the bodies from the vehicles if they weren't ejected uh, it would appear in this situation that this person was ejected from the vehicle Again, like Chief McCabe was saying, um, having to be on a scene and watching your family member um, go through this whole process of being put in a body bag and being brought to the medical examiner's office is traumatic. Uh, nobody wants to actually have to ever see this part of the whole process. And that's the way a life ends, senselessly, for no reason. Folks, I, I consider this an honor to be able to talk to you every year at this event. And Pam O'Donnell does a fantastic job at trying to push the message out with the horror that she had to deal with personally. And I want to let you know that we're in a... a we're in a day, we're in an age now where it's very easy to be distracted all the time. Every single one of us is easily distracted. And truthfully, the main distraction is this, let's be honest. How long can you actually go without looking at your phone? You should take that test one time. The fact of the matter is, it can change your life in an instant. It does change your life in an instant, and it doesn't have to. So what we want to make sure you understand is that this is very real. It happens every day. I'll give you a perfect example. Two days ago, where I live in Pequannock Township, there was a garbage truck that ran into the back of a vehicle at 5.10 in the morning that was sitting at a traffic light just waiting to go to work. The garbage truck went probably about 35 miles an hour right into the back of the car and killed the gentleman instantly. What happened was there were cameras that showed that the garbage truck driver was on his phone. He was arrested on scene. And now he's going to go to jail. That individual who's going to work is dead and his family has to live with that. All because he had to be on his phone while he was driving. This stuff is real. I need you to understand that it's real. And all we want you to do is make sensible decisions. Know that we're here to take care of you for sure, but we don't want to have to, all right? So again, I want to thank every one of you for paying attention today, understanding the gravity of the situation. And again, it's a beautiful time of year. There are a lot of things going on, but please take care of yourselves and take care of each other so that you can all go home and have a long, healthy, happy life. I'm going to pass it back over to Principal Becker. Yes, let's hear it. Great job. Great job. I told you, one of the more meaningful programs that we have. Chief Geisler, thank you for being here. Chief Weaver, thank you for being here. You've already met uh, Chief McCabe. And I would like to uh, acknowledge our superintendent because without his permission, there's no program at all. So we thank Superintendent Neese. He's hiding in the back. He doesn't like to be introduced. 
I want to thank everybody for their attention. I'd like to thank the Drama Club, the students that participated. They did a great job. Ben TV for filming this. Everybody here works together. That's what Bayonne is. Board of Ed, police, the fire. We're a very unique town and we're very, very, very happy that we work together that way. We are on perfect timing. We are now going to head back up the hill. We'll open the doors and then you will report. We are not on assembly schedule. You were just excused, period one. So where are you going when you get to the building? Period two, you pass the test. My guys, we can begin that trek back up. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, wait, before you guys leave, listen. Most of you guys have heard me speak and I will keep coming back to Bayonne High School. This is a critical time of year for you. From Memorial Day to Labor Day is the 100 deadliest days for teen drivers. More teens will die between Memorial Day and Labor Day than any time of year. The number one killer of teens is in fact car crashes. Please make better choices. I speak to sophomores, I speak to in Ms. Gordon's class, Mr. Chapman's class, I will drill it into your heads. We should not be doing this. I lost my husband and my five-year-old daughter. This is real life. This might be fake here, but it's real life. And just so you know, in June, we're going back to trial. Seven years later, I have to face the man that cut my daughter in half. So thank you to the police department, the EMS, the CAVE, Chief Geisler, the fire department, they too, you have to remember, they are human. And they go home, and they have to remember that they just extricated a senior high school student that should have graduated. They have to extricate a five-year-old baby from a car that's dead. So please take this serious. This is real life. This is your time, promise coming up. Graduation's coming up. You are worth something. You are worth something. Don't let it be you. Don't make the memories, the people you make the memories with become the memories. Don't become a memory yourself because your family will never, ever get over it. Thank you for our entire staff here, the firemen. I love you, we have a fan club. Chief Weaver, Chief Geisler, the Drama Society, Mr. Baccarella, thank you so much for always putting this on every year. This is really um, very important. And no Memorial Day to Labor Day, this is your time whether you're going to make it or not. More teens are going to die between Memorial Day and Labor Day than any other time of year. So thank you, everybody. Be safe. Better choices. You know, be the, be the change you wish to see in the world. Thank you so much. In 2018, over 40,000 people were killed on roads right here in the United States. Over 100 people die every day. There are countless bystanders who see these drivers about to engage in potentially deadly behavior, and they don't say a word. There is a misguided notion that someone else will do the right thing, that someone else will speak up, that someone else will have the courage to intervene. Drunk, drugged, and distracted driving affects all of us, and it is up to all of us to make a change. It is up to all of us to have the courage to intervene. Help make the number of car crashes decrease for 2019. Have the courage to intervene by calling 911 when you see an erratic driver or pound 77 while on a New Jersey state highway. You can help by not allowing your friend to talk or text on the phone while driving. Have the courage to take away the keys from an impaired person about to get behind the wheel. Don't be my family grieving the loss of a husband and father and a five-year-old daughter and sister. Will you help by having the courage to intervene?